In this example, we're going to use Logstash to enhance events and create a filtered list of IP addresses that are being generated by the metric set call network. As you can see here, metric bit has been enabled in this host call rifery. Metrics from this host are being collected and stored in Elasticsearch. One of the metric sets that had been enabled for this host was the network metric set. The network metric set is responsible for collecting networking details from the host. Part of the data that is collected by the network metric set is the list of IP addresses from the host. As you can see here, there are multiple IP addresses that have been collected from the host. However, only a few of them are actually relevant for observability and monitoring purposes. For this reason, we're going to use Logstash to create a filtered version of this list of IP addresses and store this list in the generated document from Metric Beat. The best way to start developing a processing pipeline for Logstash is to get yourself familiar with the documents that are stored in Elasticsearch. You need to be able to navigate across the fields from the document. For this reason, go ahead and use the Discover option on Kibana to inspect the stored documents. Keep in mind, though, that if you simply try to search all the documents from the index pattern that belongs to metric beat, you are going to see documents that don't necessarily include information about the metric set called network. For this reason, you need to create a filter in Kibana that shows only the documents that belong to the metric set network. The best way to do this in Kibana is creating a filter. So click on Add Filter and use the field called metric set.name as criteria. In this case, we're going to compare if the metric set.name field equals to the metric set call network. Once the filter applies to your search, you can pick one of the documents from the list to inspect the structure of the document. I'm going to pick this first one and click on this option called View Single Document so we can see the details behind this document. If you scroll down the document, you're going to see that there is this field in the document called host.ip that includes all the information that we are interested to get which is the IP addresses collected from the host. Now that we know which field to operate, we can start the development of a processing pipeline on Logstash. To start developing a processing pipeline for Logstash, you have to create a file that will contain your processing logic. We're going to call this file metricbeat.conf. This file will contain three building blocks, an input, an output, and a filter. Let's start with the input. In this example, we are configuring Logstash to expose an endpoint that is compatible with the Beats protocol and exposing it over the port 5044. This is going to be the endpoint that metric bit will connect and send the events for processing. The next step is to configure a output. An output is a building block that allows Logstash to send the processed events to external locations. In this case, we are sending the processed events to Elasticsearch for indexing purposes. Now that we have an input and output configured, we can start developing our filter. A filter, as the name implies, allows Logstash to perform some staged processing. Our first stage is going to filter only the events that belongs to the metric set network. 
we can use conditions like this and manipulate all the fields from the event which makes the life for developers really easy. Now that we have filtered for only the metric set network, we can start the code that's going to create the filtered list of IP addresses. We're going to use a filter called Ruby that allows developers to write Ruby code in Logstash. Our code will first create a filtered list of IPs that is going to be an array. Then we are going to actually instantiate a CIDR block that is going to create a in-memory list of the only possible IP addresses that we are intending to evaluate. The CIDR block that we are going to use will have 256 positions and is going to only include IP addresses that has the following prefix 192.168.4 Then we are going to retrieve the existing IP addresses from the event that is available in the Ruby code in the form of the object call event. From this event, we can retrieve specific fields. In this case, we are going to use the field host IP. Keep in mind that this notation about brackets is when we want to navigate across subfields. Now that we have the list of existing IPs, we can using the existing IPs to iterate over this list and make sure that only the valid IP addresses will be part of the future at least. For this, we can simply check if the IP address from the existing list is included in the CIDR block that we've created before. If it is, we are going to actually include this on the future list of IPs. Now that we have the list of IP addresses properly created, we can go back to the event and add a new field on this event that's going to be called host.ips and is going to contain the future list of IP addresses. With this code, we cover pretty much everything we need to actually create this future list of IP addresses. We're going to use another filter called mutate that allows Logstash to mutate the event in this case, we are going to simply add a tag that is going to signalize that this event has been properly processed by Logstash. Now that we have our Logstash configuration file created, we can start an instance of Logstash that will parse this configuration file and expose the endpoint so we can start changing the metric bit configuration to send the events for this endpoint. To start an instance of Logstash, go to your Logstash installation and use the executable called Logstash that is available on the bin folder. This executable expects you to provide a configuration file. So just provide the configuration file that we've created before. Once you execute Logstash, it's going to parse the configuration file and if everything is correct, it's going to expose the endpoint compatible with the BIT protocol and 
we are going to be ready to start the configuration of metric beat to point to this log stash endpoint. In the metric beat configuration file, the first step is to make sure that only log stash has an output configured. So, coming out any other outputs that you had configured before and enable the output for log stash. The log stash output expects you to specify at least the field called hosts that contain an array of endpoints representing all the log stash instances that you have started. Now that you have configured metric B to send all the events to log stash for processing, you can start your metric beat once again. Once metric beats finish starting, we can check in Kibana if the events that has been processed by log stash effectively created the filtered list of IP addresses. Back to Kibana, we can now check if the new documents generated by Logstash contain the filtered list of IP addresses. Before moving further, make sure that you are still using the filter that only displays the documents that belongs to the metric set called network. Then click on Refresh to load the new set of documents that has been sent by Logstash. I'm going to pick this first document over here and click on the option View Single Documents so we can expect this document. As you can see here, a new field called host.ips has been created and includes the only two IP addresses that represents the possible IP addresses from the CIDR block that we've created. Also, if we inspect the tags field, we're going to see that there will be this new tag called process by log stash included, confirming that our log stash processing pipeline worked as expected. 